everyone, welcome to our first episode of Tech Tuesdays. Today we're going to be discussing speech recognition. So I'm joined by one of our tech team, Liam. Hi there. So we're going to jump straight into it and start with the question, what is speech recognition? Can you help us out with that, Liam? Absolutely, can't I? <laughs> Good question. Um, so speech recognition in its simplest form is putting words on screen that are spoken in real time. Um, or not necessarily on screen, um, being recognised in any application really. So most people will have had a exposure to speech recognition with either Siri, Alexa or OK Google, uh, which are mobile phone based or uh, smart device um, throughout the house. Um, so yeah, most people will have used speech recognition but probably not realised the other uses for it or that they're even using speech recognition. Um, along with that, speech recognition is also used in automated phone systems, such as if you bring up the bank. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, it used to be, you know, quite closed questions. Can you confirm your name or your card number um, with yes or no or read out a 16 digit number? Now it's really open ended and they ask you just for a description of your problem and they then try and, you know, move you to the right department, which shows how far it's come on. Um, along with that, it's also in cars now, um, but in our context of speech recognition, we'll be looking at it in terms of Nuance's Dragon speech recognition software, which um, we provide um, training on and also sell licenses on. Um, so we deal mainly with Dragon Professional, Dragon Professional Anywhere, uh, which is the enterprise version, and also Dragon Medical. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you know what it is we're going to be talking about, um, we decided to do a question and answer. So we asked our social media followers to submit some questions to us and we're going to answer them for you. So we've picked five and we're going to go straight into the first one, which is from Rebecca. She says, I can envisage speech recognition for companies who traditionally use dictation solutions, such as solicitors, um, but would it be useful in other office environments? Well, that's a good question for Rebecca, and thanks for everyone that's written in. I'm sure there's hundreds of questions. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, going back to the question, um, yes is the short answer. It will have application. It will have uses in offices, uh, not just solicitors. So, if for instance you have RSIs in your wrist, and you know you don't particularly do a lot of typing, but you know you're in pain, um, then from an access to work perspective and getting people back in the workplace. Um, then yeah, it can be used in that respect. It's also an efficiency tool though. So as solicitors use it to try and get words on screen, words on screen quickly, um, other people um, that perhaps work in sales or perhaps report right, um, they can use it to, um, again, obviously get words on screen, but reply to you know, emails quicker um, or even you know, report right even quicker. Um, along with along with um, the access to work element of it, um, Dragon doesn't make um, spelling errors, so it's a good tool if you suffer dyslexia or, or you know, if you're a poor speller, so to speak. Um, so there are multiple applications for it within um, the office environment. Great. Okay, the second question is from Max, and he asks, how can I get Dragon to distinguish between cell and cell? when working in a spreadsheet. Um, he wants to know how to navigate and how to teach Dragon the different meanings between the words. Okay, well, Dragon will know the different meanings, but to harness Dragon and use it to its potential, it's just about knowing the context in which to basically um, dictate. Um, along with that, you know, Dragon is a very deep product, so there's a lot of things you can do with it that aren't necessarily you know, at the surface, you've got to really scratch below the surface to get the most out of it. And as a company, we provide training on that, um, both medical and professional. Um, but to answer Max's question, um, what he would need to do in this instance is say, um, move to cell and then a cell letter and number in, mm -hmm. um, in Excel. So it'd be, you know, move to cell A1 and it will move the, um, the cell highlight in Excel to that relevant cell. If he was to just say cell A1, it would write cell A1 in the cell that he already had selected. If he was to say go to cell 1, again, it would write go to cell 1. Mm -hmm. um, and if he said, you know, move to and then 
had a pause, picked up a coffee and had a drink and then sell A1. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Dragon would take that as um, dictation rather than a command because there's a particular way you need to issue a command in Dragon. So you've got to be careful with what you're saying before and after then. Is Pretty much, pretty yeah. Much yeah. And, okay. you know, take advantage of any training that you can, you, you can get, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Third question is um, from Jim. He says, I'm interested in purchasing Dragon for my personal use. Uh, says he writes a lot of emails, um, but he said there's so many versions, he doesn't know which one would be best suited to him. Mm. So, you're right, there are a lot of versions. Um, in terms of what you probably need if you're doing emails at home, um, probably Dragon Professional Individual, which uh, can be installed on, I think it's up to four computers. Anyone talks about four activations. Um, the way that differs from Dragon Professional Group is Dragon Professional Group is an enterprise sort of solution where you can have roving profiles, which you wouldn't need if you're at home. Um, and Dragon Medical um, is obviously, um, you know, made for medical environments, so dictated into electronic patient record systems. Um, and it's also got, you know, 80 odd different medical vocabularies that, you know, give additional context to, um, to Dragon in terms of drug names and whatnot. Um, so yeah, um, the version you would need is Dragon Professional Individual. Okay, our next question is from Elizabeth and she says, Nuance have announced that they are discontinuing Dragon for Mac. Does this mean that it won't work at all in the future? Well, they have um, announced that they're discontinuing Dragon for Mac. Um, you know, differing views on Dragon for Mac. Some people loved it, some people hated it. Kind of like Marmite. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's quite buggy uh, at times, but it certainly certainly moved in the right direction with uh, version six, which was the most current one, which is the one you'll probably be using. And there was eight service patches for that. Um, so what Nuance's announcement means in general is that going forward, A, Dragon for Mac won't be produced again. B, they're not gonna produce any more service patches for it. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you're on 6.8 at the moment, that's as good as it's ever gonna get. Um, in this current version on this current operating system, if you're on the most current one from uh, of Apple's operating systems. But Apple obviously release new operating systems quite frequently. Um, so if you update to the newest or the next release of the Apple operating system, um, Nuance won't be working on any patches for Dragon in that operating environment, operating system environment. So if it does develop bugs, after it was previously working okay, or even if it just stops working, um, then yeah, there won't be anything you can really do, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, other than roll back to an operating system, oh, well, an Apple operating system that you know did work with yeah. Dragon. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, we'd probably recommend, if you could, um, you know, get a Windows machine and get a Dragon Professional yeah. individual, um, Dragon for Windows has been more mature than Dragon for Apple, um, so on Dragon, Dragon for Mac, sorry. So um, you will tend to get a more positive user experience with it. But obviously, some people love Macs, detest Windows. Some people love Windows and detest Macs. So yeah. it's, it's a trade-off. Um, but yeah, in, in short, if it stops working, you know, new ones won't do anything. Yeah. So if you want Windows. If you want Dragon, get Windows, pretty much. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, yeah. Top <laughs> there we go. It. Okay, our last question is from Gerard. He says, how can I get Dragon to type numerals rather than spelling out the full word? So there's a couple of ways again. Um, you can either um, say numeral followed by um, the number, so numeral one, and then it'll, it'll put the number one rather than the written form of one. Or there's an option in Dragon which is um, called auto formatting options. You can go in there and change the setting um, and basically choose um, a number to then, if you go above that number, make sure it's the numeral rather than the written form. So I think the, the option is like zero and above will always put in numbers or two and above will always put numbers, things like that. Um, but again, um, you know, if you want to, you know, go into it and get more in depth with how to do things with Dragon, then again, we'd recommend having some form of training. Okay. 
There we go, so there are all our questions answered. We hope they've been helpful. And that concludes our first Tech Tuesdays videos. So make sure that you like and share and even tag someone that you think it might be useful to. All right, see you next week. See you next Tuesday. <laughs>